Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we are looking at the brand new premium uh, supercruiser, the Champagne. Well, what do you mean it's a battleship? No, it isn't. <laughs> and uh, I'll, prove, I'll, prove my, I'll prove my point. It does look suspiciously like a Gasconium. And if we look into the description that Wargaming has put in, it says that it is a design that is close to that of the Gasconium. Now, there were four Richelieu class battleships. There was the Richelieu herself, there was the Jean Bart, who we have at tier 9, there was the Clemenceau, which we don't have in game, but which was also on the Richelieu layout with two forward facing guns, and there was the Gasconia, which is the Tech 3 tier 8, which has, well, a more conventional layout. And if you put the two of them next to each other, I mean, just visually, right? Just, just, just look at them. You put the two of them next to each other, they look almost identical. And, uh, the thing is, this is not a Gasconia class battleship. In fact, this isn't a battleship at all. <laughs> and Wargaming is not doing us a favor here in in, clarify, in declaring it as, as such, because it is slightly misleading. But uh, we'll we get to that. So this thing very, very obviously did not exist. And uh, even though, once again, the details say that the main armament of 406mm guns was developed in France, in the 1930s, I have not been able to find a reference anywhere to either the guns or to, well, these specific guns being developed. So it says that they are L50s made by Schneider, or I don't know how the French pronounce that, but <laughs> pronouncing it like that. And that's a company that made field artillery and tanks, but I haven't seen them actually making a naval gun of any sorts. And I haven't seen any 406 millimeter French naval guns around either. So if you have any links or any hints to where, where this might come from, other than the imag imagination of the designers, then do please do let me know because I am somewhat curious. Anyway, so yeah, a, a, sh a ship that didn't exist. Now let, let's have a very quick look. Actually, let's start out with a comparison because what, what she does look so much like a Gasconia that you'd be fooled to think that it is a Gasconia class. And it also the description says that. So let's compare the two of them. Um, very very quickly what we notice is that the Gasconia gets three engine boosts and two rapid reloads. The Champagne gets four engine boosts and five rapid reloads. Although these are only tier one rapid reloads, whereas the Gasconia gets the tier two ones. Um, the Gasconia has significantly more hit points and armor. The Champagne does not. The Champagne is fast. She's doing almost 34 knots out of the box and is... Uh, not quite as maneuverable as the Gasconia out of the box, but she is quicker and ha has a higher traverse. The guns uh, are interesting. So these are two triple turrets. So we only have six guns on the ship, at least six main guns. They, in return, they get a reasonably low base reload with, of 18.5 seconds. We've seen this in the German higher tier battleships as well, that they get a faster reload to compensate for the lower number of guns. They are 406 millimeter guns. They have a very respectable range of almost 15 kilometers. And while they are doing a significantly better amount of HE damage, the AP damage is almost identical to the 380 mils that we get on the Gasconia. The turrets turn faster. The secondaries, the main secondaries are completely identical. And so are the auto secondaries with the only exception that you get 12 on each side instead of eight. So. Brawler? <laughs> I don't know. But she gets more of those. Which doesn't, interestingly enough, because these are 100mm guns, so they should be dual purpose, translate into better AA, because she actually has worse AA than the Gasconia. She does, however, have a slightly better concealment. So why do I keep insisting that this is not a battleship? I mean, it's close enough to the, to the Gasconia. Let me show you another ship that this, I think, is, mu is a much more valid comparison. Let's put in... Um, let's put in the Americans, I need gonna need tier nine premiums. Uh, where do we find this thing? There, should, there we go. That's the one I want. Um, and we'll add that to the list, and then we compare these two. And we find that the Champagne has slightly better torpedo protection, but she has less health than the Alaska. <laughs> This is a tier 8 Alaska, more or less. 
it's a it's a French super cruiser, and you, you to do try to convince me of the opposite. Uh, speed is similar, uh, acceleration is very similar, traverse speed is identical, turn base turn time is identical. Obviously, the Alaska gets 305 mil main guns with a faster reload, but the Gasconia has has better range with the uh, the two triplets. Uh, yeah, we don't really need to compare the, the secondaries too much, but um, the AA is comparable, at least in the, in the large caliber. In the small caliber, the Alaska, obviously being an American ship, has the upper hand. And uh, after the Alaska has been... It's been a while, but she's been buffed in terms of her concealment, so the Alaska has slightly better concealment. This, regardless, is a cruiser. <laughs> and this is important, because I started playing this as a battleship, and it doesn't work at all. I was prepared to rip into this ship in the review and say, look, this is complete and utter garbage. This thing is useless. And then I realized, after reviewing and doing the stats comparisons a couple of times, that this isn't a battleship, it's a cruiser. So what are we doing with the elite bonus? Uh, there is a, you can either go with, why am I looking at the Alaska? Terry, you're looking at the wrong ship again. Uh, Champagne, here we go. Uh, you can either go with fire and flooding resistance or with main battery reload, and I don't think that's a question. So main battery reload it is. And we have we have the precise aim here because you only have six shells. Now the guns are, even without the historical camo, are very, very nice uh, in precise, actually, even at long range. I often get all six shells on target. But uh, that is with the precision mod in here, which makes sense. You do not, and you could be very tempted to say you want a deck protection mod, like I'm sailing on the actual Gasconia, or you could say you want a propulsion mod. No, you want another steering mod, because this is a cruiser. It doesn't have any armor, it doesn't have any health. It's barely got more health than that Manal Hippo. <laughs> and you want, so double steering is what I ended up with after trying a couple of other uh, approaches. Now, uh, I have put a reasonably high level commander in here because you do get five rapid reloads. You absolutely have to have the master reloader. Usually for a tier eight, I wouldn't be putting that in there. But um, it is, I would almost say essential to have that skill in just in order to be able to use the consumables because of the reduced cooldown. So we're playing with that, but not an APCS or anything. Uh, in the first, no, no surprises here. In the first ones, you do want artillery maintenance. Um, Victoria's charge makes sense. You don't you absolutely, really, really don't need fire supremacy. So she is again not a perfect captain trainer, <laughs> but uh, you you probably want the survivalist. I have exploit weakness. I mean, you, you could take generalist here as well. It doesn't make a huge difference. Fully prepared. Uh, most definitely, you want extinguisher, uh, and most definitely, you want engine overload because this thing is quick, and I mean proper quick. With the engine boost active, I think she does about 38 knots. <laughs> Told you it's not a battleship. And yeah, the, the one skill that you really need to have in this thing is the master re reloader, because you do get the five rapid reloads and you really want to make the, ma the maximum out of, your, uh, out of your guns, because you only have six of them. All right, uh, let's have a very quick look at the camo. So the historical camo, given that it is a battleship camo, gives us the standard battleship set, which is hit points, range, and dispersion, which is great because it gives better dispersion, which is really something we want on the main guns. But uh, as usual, we're sailing with um, we're sailing with the seaborne assault here because these things are expensive. And lastly, we'll have a very quick look at the battle honors. Uh, you play ten battles easy, and you cause fifty citadel hits doable for four titanium. All right, um, so the play when I played her first, playing her as a battleship, trying to play her at range, doesn't work. You play the ship like a like a super cruiser. You play the first half of the battle if you need to at long range, and at least until enemy ships are spotted. But you have a pretty good detection range, and you are fast, so you can actually keep up with destroyers and land support in the beginning if that's something you want to do. And you have some concealment where you can disengage from. And other than that, it's nobody expects a battleship to do 38 knots. Well, this isn't one, so wow. But um, you, you'll find that a lot of players will actually miss because you are literally just quicker than they thought they would be, throwing their aim off quite a bit. And with the double steering, 
we do get down to uh, 10.8 second turn time, which um, they are better, but it is pretty, pretty darn good. And we've got the guns down to almost 17 seconds base reload. So, all right then, now let's take this super cruiser into action. In the first battle, we are playing on Epicenter. And this is one of those ships where you'd feel like eh, Epicenter is not particularly great because, well, it's a, it looks like a long range ship really. But we're up against Kaga, Bismarck, North Carolina, Miyoko, Brooklyn, Leberecht, Maas, and Shiratsuyu. So a mostly tier seven battle actually. And yeah, what, what we can do in this thing, given that we have practically cru super cruiser armor and health pool is stay at range at the beginning until everything is spotted and the like the battle lines are clear so i'm but i'm gonna head forward at least into the outer ring and see that we can give some fire support to anything coming in plus i mean the aa isn't as good as on the gasconia but we can still do some aa support there comes <laughs> comes the wave of skill from the enemy kaga A friendly kaga is starting to do that as well no fighter planes out here because double kaga so they're just going to pass by each other's wave and wish each other good luck. <laughs> but yeah, look at this. Engine boost up 38 knots. Of course, once you start turning the ship, she slows down very, very quickly. But in a straight line, this thing <laughs> is very, very quick. Okay. Um, uh, there's enemy Leberecht Maas. Let's see if we can get an early shot off. Uh, we even managed without getting spotted because we're behind the island. Uh, this one over pen, but you know. We can use the rapid reload and see if I can get some shots on uh, at, against that Brooklyn there. Generally, you want to use... No, Brooklyn's behind. Maybe I'll get another shot off at Leberecht Mars, but uh, generally you want to use the rapid reload, I think... Um, what's it, like two seconds, three seconds uh, in, into, an, into a reload, because that ensures that you get two salvos off. But don't be too conservative with it, because you've got five of them. All right, shots out at the Miyoko. Let's see if we've got some more luck from here. Uh, yeah, one bounce, two two pens. Not not, not great, but uh, at this range, I'm not complaining against against the maneuvering cruiser. Uh, we're just sitting here and letting the um, the rest of our team duke it out at the moment and just taking some long range pot shots. Okay, we do see some planes coming in here, so it's time to get moving in case the Kaga gets any funny ideas. Uh, there's a Belfast there who can lend some AA support. No, he's going after the destroyer. Okay. And which means we're not really in a position to help here. But I think at this point we've pretty much got uh, a decent idea where where everybody is. Uh, and uh, we've, we've taken a couple of shots out. We are not holding the inner two circles, so we are the, the points are ticking not in our favor. But that Miyoko looks like um, he's, he's positioned himself into an island, so I'm going to see if I can do something about that thing. And yeah, two seconds into the into the reload is a decent time. Another bounce off the Mayoko. The 406 mils are really nothing special uh, compared to the regular 380s. So, but Miyoko is moving forward because he doesn't have a choice. Uh, let's see if we can get another salvo in. I was a little bit late, so my rapid reload is not there, but four hits in and the Miyoko is gone. Okay, that's the first kill. And, um, but we are still... A bunch of points behind. Okay, Bismarck. Now, obviously, we don't want to go and brawl a Bismarck because we are in a cruiser. Don't don't forget that. This is not a battleship. This is a cruiser. So, but we are sitting at range, and we can do some. We can dish out some reasonable punishment against the Bismarck. And people have better things to shoot at right now than me. So, uh, I'm just sitting here and uh, lobbing shells across the countryside and making sure the outer ring is staying in our possession. The destroyers have done a good job and have managed to capture the uh, the center ring. And uh, we're wearing this Bismarck down reasonably quickly. So that's what we do. And that Brooklyn there is setting him on fire, I think. Yeah, we, we, but we do need to get the, the Bismarck uh, removed. But now it's the time to get going. So we're one ship down each. We've lost the battleship in the center. Unsurprisingly, Bismarck's on fire, but he is shooting. He's shooting at me, obviously, because he can't see the Brooklyn. But look at where his shots landed, like miles behind me. And Bismarck is done for. Okay, now we can now we can roll, because now we are uh, one kill ahead. The enemy Kaga is dead. I don't know who did that, but uh, now we can roll and, um, and and get going. So yeah, this is not a ship in which you tank. This is a cruiser. <laughs> this is a ship in which you move around, uh, find positions, 
and use your rapid firing guns. Okay, Shiratsuyu. Uh, okay, let's see if we can get some shots off. And actually switch over to the high explosive at this range. Although there's Brooklyn over there. And I think I won't be able to get around just in time for the rapid reload to kick in. So that's all right. Okay, Shiratsu, you and Leberich Maas are in the center cup. We are still behind on points. So even, and we're even on kills. So this is by no means a decided thing yet. Okay, Shiratsu, you just dropped his torps. And the secondaries on the ship are actually pretty good. It's the same like on the, on the Gascogne. So if you can get an auto secondary range, and I think we're just outside, but uh, even, oh yeah, no, they, they, they open up. Even the main secondaries are doing a very reasonable job. And now the main guns are already reloaded, which can come as a very nasty surprise for destroyers. Okay, Leberecht Maas, he's probably dropped Torps round about now, so let's go put her into reverse. And the, there you see the auto secondaries opening up. I'm just waiting for the main guns to reload. Yeah, she reloads a lot faster than your, stan your standard battleship, because, it, well, it's not a battleship, it's a, it's a super cruiser. Okay, Leberecht Maas is running. The Torps should be there any second. There they come. Okay, he dropped a bit later than I thought he would. That means we're probably going to take two. That's all right, we haven't really taken any damage so far. And there's Brooklyn. Uh, okay, so look, uh, Belfast, you can kill Leberecht Maas, right? He's run into an island. Uh, so I, and I, I'll kill Brooklyn, because we're still behind on points. But um, Leberecht Maas is under carrier fire, so uh, I don't have to worry about this guy. Do I? Come on, people. He's stuck there. He's literally immobile against an island. <laughs> kill that thing. It's like, I can't move here. Uh, okay. I'm gonna see if I can do something about the Brooklyn though. Just keeping my... and he's still alive. Just keeping my nose in. I'm switching the engine boost on already just think, because I want to get going, but... <laughs> Leberich Pass is still okay. I'll do it myself. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Uh, that takes a lot of doing. Uh, okay, Belfast takes him out. Well done, finally. Thank you. That just leaves the Brooklyn, and the Brooklyn is dead. There come the Level H Mass Torps, but I'm in a cruiser, so it's no problem at all for me to dodge those, except for one, which causes a flood, which is fine. Okay, that's just about the Brooklyn then to, to deal with. And we've done, what about, yeah, 70,000 points of damage. So this is really how you want to play this thing, like you would play in Alaska in Tier 8. You want to, uh, you want to s stay at range at the opening section, make sure that you're not coming under concentrated fire, because she melts pretty quickly. And then uh, go and dish out some punishment and zip around, and zip around the the landscape. So well done, team. And uh, let's do a second one. We are on Friar's Lantern, and this is much more of a tier eight game at this point. We've got North Carolina, Amagi, Roma, Colorado, Hipper, New Orleans, and Akatsuki, and we've got a Xianyang in our team. So. Fry's Lantern domination is fun. This is a map which has lots of lots of islands that you can hide behind, and um, yeah, l lots of good positions. And if you haven't noticed, it's a pumpkin. <laughs> Just look at it. Look at the map. It's a pumpkin. But we're spawning next to one of the destroyers, so we'll head over into towards A Cup and give him some early fire support. Now we can't do this for very long. Yeah, that's, it's the Xianyang. Okay. So we'll give the Xianyang support. Now look at this thing. I don't even have the acceleration module because again, I am sailing with double steering. But um, I, I'm gonna head, I'm gonna head full speed ahead uh, towards that island and I'm keeping up with the Xianyang. Now we're pushing the engine boost in and I think I'm actually overtaking him. <laughs> yep. A very, very fast cruiser she is. Uh, so obviously we, we, are, we are getting ourselves into a bit of trouble here because if half the enemy team shows up over there. But I do want to, because there's, there, there, there are two cruisers in the enemy team. So if one of them shows up here, I want to be able to give the Xianyang some support. And then he can go and bully all the battleships and take the cup because I don't want to be in the cup. I have this big island in front of me that I can use to disengage. Okay, Amagi. Obviously I'm out spotting these guys. Uh, okay, some shots out. And do we um, look at look at the precision on these things? Throwing six hits in, and there's the hipper. Okay, so rapid reload is on, and we're going to start taking hipper under fire now. Obviously, there's Roma, which is a bit of an issue, because we are in a cruiser, really, <laughs> and cruisers don't generally don't react very well when when um, when being shot at by Roma. So I'm gonna reverse a little bit, and go bow in, see if I can dodge some Roma shots, and uh, just. Yep, there, there they come, but he's mostly hit my bow section, so these are probably going to over be over-penetrating. Hipper's taking me under fire as well, but 
I can broadside hipper, uh, Roma not so much. <laughs> so just backing off here, waiting for the cavalry to arrive because the big, the, uh, the heavy hitters behind me here have finally made it into their way. But we are distracting the hipper uh, from taking the Xianyang under fire, which is exactly what I want. I want the, hi uh, the hipper dead. So Xianyang can operate freely and um, and can deal with the battleships. Now we are down to half health and it's just really been Hipper and Roma shooting at us. So if she comes under fire, she melts very, very quickly. But now I'm far enough back that they've got better stuff to shoot at. So Hipper, are you going forward? I think you are. Okay. And Xianyang is just waiting there. I'm pretty sure he's undetected, but Hipper is obviously a huge danger to the Xianyang. So we need to, we need to get that thing killed. So everybody take the Hipper under fire, please. And he's not paying attention because he's shooting at me. So I'm a distraction. <laughs> but now we, um, yeah, the, I'm going to use the Colorado there as a meat shield because even the hipper can wear me down. I think the hipper is dead. Now he's realized the, the error of his ways, but I think Colorado, yeah, Colorado gets him. And Roma is now, um, well, now Xianyang is smoking up. There's uh, the hydro is, the hydro cruiser is down, which means uh, Roma is in trouble. So we're down to 14,000 hit points. And we're still getting shots and getting hits by the Roma, but we can duke out most, most of them. There come the rear turrets still coming in. And once again, look at his shots. His shots are landing, uh, are landing to, uh, towards the rear because I'm just, I'm just a lot quicker than he's expecting me to be. But I think we'll be leaving the Roma to the Xianyang because yeah, he's now, he's now disengaging. And uh, we'll take on the Amagi. Okay, we may get a parking shot out at the Roma, but now let's take on the Amagi because uh, he. He doesn't look like he's paying attention, and I'm obviously I'm unspotted. And the rest of our team is still holding around Seacup, which is which is amazing. Well done, team. We have lost our destroyer down there, but uh, they're down to one cruiser, and the rest is all battleships. So this Yan Yang's going to have a field day, and I'm going to see if I can take care of this Amagi. So this is the situation where if you're lucky and if you know what you're doing, you can actually start a brawl in this ship. This is the same that you could in any any other cruiser. So uh, guns out. Rapid reload on, and once we're in a straight line, we slam in the the, reload, uh, the engine boost. Okay, Amagi has noticed that I'm firing at him, obviously. So engine boost up, and we're speeding up to, well, if I'm out getting out of my turn to to 38 knots. And we're just waiting for the salvo from the Amagi coming in. Okay, there he comes, and he's overshot. You see, that's that's what I mean. Okay, now can I kill this thing before he gets a second salvo off? Uh, might need a citadel or two for that, but um, he is on fire. My auto secondary is opening up. His secondary is opening up. He might be able to get one more salvo out, but I've got a heal coming of cooldown, so that should be fine. And my guns are definitely beating his reload. So shots out. Uh, can I get him killed? Oh, he's on almost no health. Come on, die! Now he's getting a couple more shots off, but it's not enough for him, and he's dead. Okay. <laughs> yep, you can do that in this ship. Uh, because you are just so much quicker than than, they, than people expect. And you can use that speed to your advantage because it, it'll just throw off the aim of so many people. Uh, I'm not sure I can lob this, but uh, now we've got a moment. I mean, we're out of heals, so the, these 8,000 uh, these eight thousand uh, hit points are all we're going to get. And there's two minutes left in this game. Uh, we, and we, but we, uh, that North Carolina is dead. Well done, Xianyang. So we're holding two cups still. Uh, that one battleship down south, we're probably going to lose. Um, but uh, oh, we, we're taking we've taken out the other cruiser. Okay, and yeah, we've lost the Gneisen now down there. That's unsur unsurprising. But we are we have a comfortable uh, points lead. So now we're just going to have some fun with this Colorado down there. I don't have any heals left, but I'm just uh, I'm just boost and I'm just engine boost engine boosting down there, and see if we can. Um, if we can get a couple more shots off. That Roma is about dead. Let's see if I can secure the kill here or if someone's gonna take him. Oh, okay, Man Amagi's got shots out, so I'll let him take it. Yeah, Roma's gonna Roma's gonna burn down. Doesn't look like he's got a heal. And he's probably, if he does, he's probably realized that they lost, so it's no point. And there's a full health Colorado down here. Okay, Roma dead, so let's open up the Colorado. Six kilometers, yep. <laughs> and that's something we can do to Colorados. And don't forget about the secondaries. They have a very good range. Oh, sorry, I'm I'm sailing into your torpedoes here. I didn't see that. They have a very good range. Uh, the only thing that's a little unfortunate, uh, the same like in the Gasconia, is the uh, is the arrangement of the guns. So the next salvo from the Colorado is probably going to kill me. Uh, yeah, there we go. But um, still inflicted some pain on this thing. Yeah, we're up to 95,000 points of damage. 
And this is this is this this is how you play this ship, right? You don't play this as a battleship. You don't get into tanking bow in positions or sort of things like that. You stay at range if you in the begin in the opening stages if you need to. You spot an opening, um, and then you can get going and uh, and do some fun things. But uh, yeah, she's fast enough to support destroyers in the opening stages, which on domination maps can be hugely useful, because usually. Uh, the one problem that they face in capture circles is enemy cruisers. And if you've got basically a, a super cruiser uh, sailing sailing alongside you at 38 knots, getting into the capture circle early, uh, <laughs> yep, that's the kind of thing you can do. So, yeah, um, fun ship once you find out, once you realize that it's not actually a battleship. Uh, and then, then she works just perfectly fine. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye.